fourth space vehicle in NASA's Skylab program was moved to the launch pad at Kennedy Space Center in August 1973. The move was made at an early date so that this Saturn rocket and its spacecraft could serve as a potential rescue vehicle for the second manned Skylab crew. The space vehicle remained in a launch-ready condition at Pad B until the end of the 59-day mission of the second crew. In November, the Saturn rocket was prepared to launch the third Skylab crew to a rendezvous with the orbiting space station. Gerald Carr was commander of this, the final Skylab mission. William Pogue was pilot. And Dr. Edward Gibson was science pilot. None of the men had been in space before, but on this 85-day mission, each of them would set endurance records for the longest time spent in space flight. Liftoff of the fourth Skylab vehicle was delayed for a week when hairline cracks were discovered in the rocket fins. With the fins replaced, final checkout was performed by the KSC Manned Launch Operations Team. This Skylab launch would be the last manned flight from Kennedy Space Center until the Apollo-Soyuz mission in July 1975. During that mission, American and Russian astronauts will link their spacecraft together in Earth orbit. The third Skylab crew boarded their spacecraft on the morning of November 16, 1973. The countdown proceeded smoothly to T-0 at 9.01 a.m. astronauts rendezvoused with the Sky Laboratory as it completed the 1480th revolution of the Earth. Skylab would orbit the Earth over 1,200 more times while the third crew lived and worked aboard the space station. A fly-around inspection of Skylab revealed that the sun shades installed by the first two crews were in good condition, as were the solar panels which generate electrical power for the space station. The men docked their spacecraft and then transferred to the Sky Laboratory. Reactivation of the space station was soon accomplished and the men explored their home in space. Some motion sickness was experienced during their first week aboard Skylab, but the men quickly adjusted to the new environment and demonstrated their ability to move about in the weightlessness of space flight. A daily routine of living and working aboard Skylab was established. It included intensive exercise periods for each man. An elastic harness and treadmill was one device used to help keep body muscles in good shape in the weightless environment. A bicycle ergometer provided a means of exercising as well as data for several medical experiments. One result of the medical investigations conducted by the three Skylab crews indicates that man can live in space for extended periods of time without ill effect.
Weight loss and muscle deterioration recorded on shorter space flights were not serious problems on the long duration missions. In fact, by mission's end, the members of the third Skylab crew were gaining weight. Measuring weight in space required a special unit called a body mass measurement device. The back and forth movement or oscillation period of the device is measured and electronically converted to a mass readout. A large selection of frozen and canned food was available for meals aboard Skylab. Individual food trays with heating elements were used by the astronauts. Magnets held the utensils to the tray until used. However, each man had to watch his own steak to make sure it stayed in place until consumed. Individual water guns provided both hot and cold water. They were used for drinking and in the preparation of some foods. Cleaning up after meals included taking out the garbage, which was deposited in a waste disposal tank. The men had a busy work schedule aboard Skylab and accomplished much more than planned. They spent more than three times the scheduled hours working on materials and space manufacturing experiments. This device was used by the astronauts in conducting flammability tests to observe the burning process in a zero gravity environment. The astronauts explained some of the work they performed aboard the Sky Laboratory. We're going to be studying a little bit in the next couple of days. One particular way of forming crystals, which Dr. John Carruthers, uh, one of the people working in the field right now, feels is a very uh, promising way in which to grow crystals with exceptionally uh, pure and uniform properties. This will enable us to create much smaller uh, crystals, or much smaller transistors, if you will, or smaller circuitry, and we think make a improvement in the electronics industry. However, what we're going to be doing has application in many fields. Uh, just plain study of fluid mechanics in zero G, I think you'll you'll see is going to be fun, and it's also got some very basic applications. What we're looking at here are the uh, two ends in which I have injected three cc's of water each, the one on the left with a red dye in it and the one on the right clear, although it does have some bubbles in it. First, I'll move them together. See, immediately surface tension takes over as soon as they hit. I hope you can see the interface between the two. And we're ready for the rotation. Now I'm going to try to rotate this so that I'll be moving the bar up, which holds the string, at around 16 inches every 10 seconds. Okay, we're in motion now. Notice nothing really violent. Okay, now I'll accelerate it a little bit. That appears to be about the max we can go. All right. There's my gyro. There's my string looking to get tangled. Now I'm going to turn this little rascal loose. There. Okay. And I'm going to use these two soda straws in order to provide the forces that I need. Now I've got this gyro spinning quite fast now. And now notice when I hit it with a straw or deflect it. See, it moves in translation, does it? Just, just exactly the way it did before. But you notice that when I hit it, it doesn't want to tumble or drift in rotation. 
It maintains its rigidity in space. The Apollo telescope console was manned two and one half times longer than scheduled. A large number of solar flares was observed by the astronauts. In addition, by blocking out the sun's disk, the Skylab crew was able to continuously observe the solar corona, an observation possible on Earth only for brief periods during a solar eclipse. Observations of Earth were also conducted by the crew. What does the United States look like from space? This is the island of Hawaii, the Los Angeles area and the coast of California, the Louisiana coast with smoke trails from two burning oil wells, the Northeast coast from New Jersey to Massachusetts, and the state of Florida with the Bahama Islands at the lower right. Multispectral photography of Earth was also performed. Using six cameras with different filters, various wavelengths of light are detected. The resultant photos allow scientists to detect diseased plants and trees, locate the sources of pollution, discover new mineral sources, aid urban planners, well, there are literally hundreds of uses for these photos, which give us a new look at our Earth. The men spent the Christmas season in space and appropriately decorated Skylab for the occasion. On Christmas Day, astronauts Carr and Gibson prepared to go outside the laboratory to observe the comet Kohoutek. Getting into a spacesuit can be quite a problem, especially when there's not gravity to hold one down. The Christmas EVA lasted seven hours. It was the longest period ever spent outside an orbiting space vehicle. In addition to observing the comet, the men changed the film in the Apollo telescope mount. This was done four times during the mission. While men on Earth did not see much of the Kohutek comet, the three men in space made several observations and brought back hundreds of photos and sketches of the comet. A new way to maneuver outside a spacecraft was tested inside Skylab. Gerald Carr demonstrated the astronaut maneuvering unit, which is being developed for future manned space missions. Experiments submitted by 25 high school students were continued on this mission. Astronaut Gibson explained one experiment proposed by Kathy Jackson of Houston, Texas. This particular experiment was devised to measure eye-hand coordination before flight, during flight, and post-flight. Hey! Another 45 seconds. Can't beat that. Well, Kathy, hope you learned something. It's been fun. The experiments, the work, and the routine of living aboard a space station continued until February 8, 1974. The third Skylab crew had completed man's longest space mission, spending 85 days in space. The Skylab program had answered many questions in achieving all of its mission goals. Man can live in space for extended periods. He can perform useful work on board and make necessary repairs of the space station. Skylab had shown that manufacturing, experimentation, and testing can be conducted in an orbital environment. 
Studies of the Earth take on a new dimension when conducted from space. In addition, an unrestricted view of solar and celestial phenomena is offered from an orbiting laboratory. Skylab, America's first manned space station, was the forerunner of the next space lab to be flown in NASA's shuttle program. The work projects being planned for shuttle missions will be greatly influenced by the results obtained from the three highly successful manned missions in NASA's Skylab program. <laughs>